Sadly, infertility is on the rise and is becoming the new normal. Instead of just accepting this as a society, we need to take a step back and look at the toxic world that has evolved year after year and understand it's not our bodies and it's not our genes. So all of this information, it comes from Anthony William, the medical medium. Everybody knows who that is by now, hopefully if you're watching our videos. And what he says is 35 years from now, 50% of women who are of the age of childbearing won't be able to conceive children. And so today, in the video, we're going to be discussing causes of infertility and why this is happening. Yes, and if you have been very familiar with our videos, what we are bringing up will not surprise you, but it's really interesting just to, to hear the list and what is causing these issues. All right, so let's, let's talk about the men. Okay. You know, why do men have issues, right? Yes. So men, we have the sperm, right? We give the sperm to the woman and that's how you <laughs> conceive a child, right? Yes. Okay, just making sure I was right there. <laughs> so I hope you know that. But the problem with our sperm is what we're exposed to, right? So mercury plays a huge role in fertility and mercury is in everything. If you haven't seen our video, we did a video places we pick up mercury but it's also important to understand that if you've never been exposed to mercury think again because past generations most definitely were exposed to mercury and passed it down to you so you have mercury in you and that plays a big role in sperm counts and then we've also got zinc zinc is super important it's been depleted from all of our soils the zinc is the soil's first line of defense with its immune system. Yes, you know, soil has an immune system and when it's getting all of these toxic things thrown at it, the zinc is the first to get depleted. The other thing is diet choices, right? Um, not bringing in more, more fruits, more veggies, more herbs and wild foods, you know, those are the four most important things for um, gaining fertility back but you know if you don't eat enough of them you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna lower your sperm count and then there is the anti-fertility foods and there's a list of a bunch of foods that if you're consuming these foods you're gonna have a harder time trying to conceive a child so these are the the main reasons that us males you know that that then we have a lower sperm count. But all of those things I just listed also play a role in women's fertility. Of course. And then there's the unforgiving four. And this is the next reason. The unforgiving four we're exposed to on a daily basis without even knowing it, right? You've got viruses. We come into contact with viruses on a daily basis without even knowing it. You go shopping, you touch the shopping cart, there could be a virus on there. Yeah. I mean, there's there's no way to avoid these viruses. So we all have viruses. We are all exposed to other environmental toxins like heavy metals, toxic DDT, pesticides, insecticides, fungicides, herbicides, and then radiation. And so these four things play a massive role in reasons that we cannot conceive children. So the next cause of infertility is consuming anti-fertility foods. Adrenalized foods is an anti-fertility food because adrenaline is like a drug to your body and especially to women's reproductive system. When your adrenal glands are completely shot, your reproductive system sees that as, oh, their body is exhausted and they can't bear a child. When you go through labor and when you give birth, you are using up a lifetime 
of adrenaline. So if you don't have enough adre adrenal reserves in your adrenal glands, then your reproductive system says, they're not gonna be able to get this baby out. So we can't, we can't produce a baby right now. Yeah, you look at, you know, look at like uh, animal products, for example. So that's an adrenaline food. Yep, so like, you know, chicken and turkey and lamb and fish and really all animal products. Um, even dairy. Even dairy, yep. And when the animal is getting slaughtered or the animal is getting melted, there's some adrenaline that's going through the blood, right? The, the shock of like, oh no, I'm, you know, I'm dying. I need to do something. Like, just like us, we have that fear, no fear, right? Fight or flight, right? The same sort of thing goes on with these animals and adrenaline gets shot through the blood and then we consume those products. Well, where does that adrenaline end up? It ends up in our bodies. Yeah. Another food example would be caffeine. So caffeine makes your body run on adrenaline. And if you guys haven't checked out Anthony's podcast on caffeine, and even our video where we did a recap of his podcast, you must check that out because you will learn so much more about caffeine that you did not know. Um, so that is something to stay away from when you are trying to get pregnant and even when you are pregnant. Yeah, and then, you know, high fat diets, right? We all consume, we, well, we don't, but we used to be on a high fat diet without even realizing we were consuming all these fats, right? But mm -hmm. um, high fat diets actually prevent the, um, the blood from moving freely through the body and we need that blood to move freely through the body so our bodies can heal right so we can detox and what we're learning uh, going through this pregnancy is what people are taught when they're pregnant is to consume an extremely high fat diet which is the opposite of what you should actually be doing yeah because it, you know, the more fat that is in your body, the more adrenaline that's being produced. So that's not gonna work out in your favor. The less good stuff going to the baby, right? Yeah, it blocks the nutrients from getting to the baby as well. Yep. So, and it's not to say, oh, you know, if you consume these things, you're not gonna get pregnant, but it's good to just be aware that these things can affect you being able to get pregnant. Yep. All right, so the adrenalized foods is one of those anti-fertility food groups. The other food group that you wanna stay away from is all of the troublemaker foods that Anthony lays out in his books because they will somehow affect those unforgiving four or work with them that we talked about. So the radiation, the DDT, the viruses, and the heavy metals. And ones to specifically stay away are really the main ones and that affect reproductive health and that's eggs, dairy, gluten, corn, soy, MSG, canola oil, and aspartame. And these also directly affect if you are going through issues like PCOS or endometriosis. So those things definitely help um, reproductive issues thrive. Yeah, and like a big reason people have, women have miscarriages is viruses, right? And you're, you're feeding the viruses with these things that Ashley just listed off. Yeah. Then there's like anti-fertility chemicals. These are chemicals that we come up into contact with out without even realizing that they're, they're a problem. Either we're consuming them or they're just in our environment. You know, things like pesticides and herbicides and plastics, which have hormones in it. Those hormones play a role in our reproductive health. They also play a role in just general health. You know, they're, un they're hormones we don't want in our bodies. Then you've got uh, the drinking water. You know, you've got chlor chlorine and fluoride, which play a role in, in, in our reproductive health. Um, Fluoride, you know, aluminum byproduct. So there you go, metals again. And then you've got uh, 
environmental exposures, things like scented candles and perfumes and colognes and air fresheners, air fresheners and anything scented really that's not uh, with a, an essential oil is going to be chemical based. So cleaners, detergents, things like that. Those are going to cause reproductive issues and lower your immune system. Yeah, and then, like you walk outside, there's streaks in the sky, and those streaks in the sky all contain toxic heavy metals. I mean, the list goes on. These are just, you know, these are just some that you, you might come into more contact with than others, right? Yeah. So the next cause of infertility are infertility actions. And these actions cause a low battery in the women's reproductive system. And it's really important that the women's reproductive system is fully charged in order to produce and carry a child. And what's really interesting is the women's reproductive system even has a soul of its own, therefore making it super intelligent and knowing how to protect you. So what I mean by that is if you have a low battery, then it's going to know, okay, we cannot produce a child because they don't have enough juice or energy to hold and labor and deliver this child. So they can't get pregnant unless they charge that battery. So the first thing that could cause a low battery is being on birth control. Nowadays, many women and young girls are on birth control because they give it out for things like acne or other health issues. So by the time that you know a young teenager is ready to have kids in her 20s or her 30s, she might have been on it for 5, 10, 15 years. And while you're on it, you're tr training your reproductive system to not get pregnant. So by the time you get off of it, your body might still be in that rhythm of, I don't want to get pregnant. Not to say that this is true for everyone because <laughs> there's definitely people that have gotten pregnant when they're on birth control or they're able to get pregnant right away afterwards. But this can be a cause for why some people cannot get pregnant. Another thing is when you consume birth control you know, year after year, that's a pharmaceutical and your liver is collecting it because it, it sees it as a foreign thing and it wants to detox it. So it collects it, kind of holds on to it. And then if you're doing anything to, you know, detoxify, like even just lemon water or some fruit, your liver will slowly release it and you'll have birth control in your system. Back in the bloodstream. Back in the bloodstream, and you might have been off it for years, but your liver is still detoxing it, so it's still in your system. So what you're saying is that if someone's trying to conceive, it's gonna take them some time. It's possible. To get rid of the birth control out of the liver before the liver is now clear and ready to conceive. Exactly, yeah. Another thing, Maybe you're not on birth control, but you've had this mindset that you don't want to get pregnant. And you've had this mindset for a while until, you know, you're ready to get pregnant. That mindset can be just as effective as being on birth control. And then, you know, we're uh, adrenaline-based culture, right? Your adrenal, we're dealing with adrenal fatigue like never before. So much. So uh, adrenaline just, you know, really wears down your body. Uh, you have adrenal glands, and when those adrenal glands are firing up on, on all cylinders 24-7, well, you're, you're, you're sending adrenaline into the bloodstream, and then you're, you, you need to build those adrenal glands back up, right? We actually talked about earlier how important it is when you conceive a child, that your adrenal glands are in tip-top shape because if they're not, you won't be able to conceive a child. So. Yeah, and many women, you know, are constantly on the go, 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 not, you know, maybe uh, taking care of their adrenal glands, feeding themselves enough, 
you know, if you're going to where you're like starving, then you are we wearing your adrenal glands out. So if you're not taking care of yourself, if you're constantly exhausting yourself, then you have adrenal fatigue. Yeah, and like my, my situation, you know, I was dealing with Epstein-Barr, I was having those panic attacks every 15 minutes, so it was like my, uh, my adrenal glands were just completely tapped out. There was nothing left, so, you know, it was important when we were getting ready to conceive to build those adrenal glands back up, not just for Ashley, but for me too because it plays a role in, in, in both both sides. Yeah. And then stress, right? We all deal with stress. We all go to work. We have um, relationships that come and go. We deal with trauma within maybe you lost a family member or something like that. You know, maybe you're sick and you're, you, know, you don't know what's, what's wrong with you and you know, that stresses you out because you can't go to work and do your job like you normally would because you're so worried about, you know, being sick, or maybe it's a family member that you're constantly worried about. You know, it it, it can the list goes on with with stresses, and we come up against these things all the time. Yeah, and that, and that triggers wears, adrenals. Yep, yeah, triggers adrenaline, wears down your adrenal glands, and then you know you're back to tapped out again. So those are the main causes of infertility and what we're up against today, right? In the next video, we are going to go through with you guys how you can battle those and good solutions to all of those issues. So don't, have no fear. You can get through it. We did. Um, we're also going to talk about our personal journey with getting pregnant. Um, it took us a little over a year and a half before we were able to get pregnant. Um, you know, it took some work. It took work to get our bodies to where they are today. And we will walk you guys through that on what we did and what you guys can do to really reverse any issues that you might be dealing with. And if you can't wait, go check out Anthony Williams' book, Life Changing Foods and read the chapter on fertility. It's called Fertility and Our Future. And in there you'll read about a lot of what we just went over and some solutions as well. And you might also be thinking, well, but my friend so-and-so or my cousin, you know, they live a reckless life and they eat whatever the heck they want. They smoke, they drink, and they have had five kids, no problem. But you have to understand that, you know, we talk about this in a lot of like the chronic illness videos, that we all have our own mix of, you know, those unforgiving four and different toxins and things. And, you know, while maybe they were able to conceive kids now, they will maybe have health issues down the road, unfortunately, if they don't start taking care of themselves. And so, if not them, the children that they've had might get sick eventually. I mean, that's what's that's what yeah, happened with. I mean, sadly. Yeah. I mean, like with my family, my my dad had issues, my mom had issues, and then by the time I was 30, I had issues, and all my sisters are dealing with issues. So I mean, it, it it's definitely true to the generational idea that stuff gets passed from generation to generation. With all that said. We're not trying to scare you guys, but rather just put things in perspective so you are aware of what's happening and then that you know the things you can do to help reverse any health issues and to help protect yourself as well. Yep. And as always, thanks for being here. Uh, we can't sh wait to share this next one with you because it's all about what we did to heal our bodies and get us ready to conceive this baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys, thanks again, and we will see you soon. See ya. Bye.